ओके सो इन आवर लास्ट लेक्चर यू मस्ट हैव रिमेम्बर दैट आई हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट द एवोल्यूशन ऑफ ए मेन सीक्वेंस स्टार टूवर्ड्स द रेड जैंड फेस what basically happens right now many things also happen in between but i just gave you a very basic overview today again i am also going to give you a very basic overview so in my this discussion a lot of very minor details will be skipped which i will cover later on because if i give you all the details all of a sudden you may have difficulty in understanding so i will proceed in this way slowly and gradually and i will keep on adding the finer details which are more important okay so let's start so again after the main sequence phase what do we have left we have a star where the hydrogen is exhausted more or less and we have a hydrogen rich envelope right now there are various types of possibilities uh, i am talking about main sequence star so this means sesam star on the hr diagram right and mass is obviously greater than what's the limit 0.08 that's the lower limit because before below the that limit what do we have fusion cannot happen core becomes degenerate right so you must remember that once a core becomes degenerate the temperature and pressure becomes decoupled so even if the pressure keeps on increasing temperature doesn't increase and for fusion we need nuclei to come close to each other so that they are within the range of strong interaction and this will happen only if their temperature is high so if the temperature doesn't increase they will not come close to each other i mean they will be coming because of the pressure but fusion will not happen anyway now so let's first talk about very low mass star mass is less than 0.4 stellar mass okay so what will happen in this case there is no helium burning i mean the mass of the star is so small that just hydrogen burning happens previously in my last class i also talked about hydrogen burning no helium burning so in this case no helium burning and so what will happen as a result as a result we will say there is a very slow hydrogen burning and this is the longest lived main sequence star remember the life of a main sequence star is inversely proportional to some power of what mass, 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 mass. i talked about it again right so this is the very longest lived main sequence star and so here the red giant phase is very long lived and that's why it is also called red dwarf okay so now let's come to the next part which is a low mass star now the range of mass is 0.8 to 2 solar masses okay so what happens here previously no helium burning now let us start someone helium burning so here helium burning will happen but it will be very unstable i mean very small amount of helium burning will happen so helium burning will is unstable and this happens in helium flash i will talk about the details later on but just keep in mind that there is no helium burning and here the burning is unstable and it happens in a helium flash okay and after that whatever helium is burned okay and also along with here what will happen as a result of hydrogen burning the core will become degenerate so in the brown dwarf case the core was becoming degenerate right the core was hydrogen itself it's little bit of helium now here 
but that helium was not due to hydrogen burning but now here this helium right whatever is being produced slowly becomes degenerate so here no helium burning here very small helium burning but the mass is so small that whatever is burnt later on the helium core becomes degenerate so the moment it becomes degenerate this means no further burning so this means that as a result of helium burning we will have carbon and oxygen very small amount however we will have a carbon oxygen point to us although because of the energy release the outer layers will be going up going up right because of stellar winds they will be moving apart and the core will be a carbon oxygen point now the next case which is intermediate mass star now here the mass range is 2 to 8 stellar masses what happens here you see what was the problem here in this case the problem was the degenerate helium core which was resisting the fusion of further elements but here we have after this the mass is sufficient so that the helium core is still non degenerate this means further fusion can happen so here helium ignition happens you see in a stable manner not in an unstable way like here it happens in a stable manner and after the core helium burning we have a carbon oxygen core now the carbon oxygen core becomes degenerate here so previously here the helium core was becoming degenerate for this mass range for this mass range the carbon oxygen core becomes degenerate so you must be wondering sir what is so special about this mass range why have we chosen 0.8 to 2 why not 0.7 to 2.2 the reason is this i am doing simulations and using the stellar structure equations and data from the burning processes and trying to find the condition where we have a helium degenerate core and in this case we will have a carbon oxygen degenerate core if the mass is between 2 to 8 stellar masses now what after that let's go above even more higher mass so that's a massive star mass greater than 8 solar masses here you see the problem that was having we were having here the carbon oxygen core becoming degenerate doesn't remain so here the carbon oxygen core is not degenerate so this means further elements can be burnt further burning processes can be initiated in fact all heavier elements are ignited in the core up to iron right so here we can have various types of point towards with various types of compositions and the largest mass will have iron in the core okay so you see this all this play is depending on the mass of the star the more the mass the more the possibilities similarly a person going to a restaurant good restaurant having there are two types of person let us compare this case with this case suppose a person carries only 10 rupees and goes to a restaurant he will might get only a glass of water <laughs> possibly not much possibility and a person who has got 10000 rupees and he says that i will just spend 10000 rupees on lunch what will the options what options will he have he can probably purchase all the menu number one number two he can jumble up the menu say for example from menu number 1 he said that put this item away tomato out from menu uh, menu number 2 put this vegetable out now mix them the uh, the person the the chef will say sir this will cost you more okay no problem i have money so you see the more the mass the more the possibilities just like the person has got so much money he can spend it he has so many options right good 
we will talk about more details in the next class because okay. I have not talked about the Schoenberg Chandrasekhar movement and also I have not talked about your Nova, Supernova and all that so we will talk about it later on but slowly this is the entire process that is going on so very low, low, intermediate, massive right these are the very basic processes but again not all the processes have been listed over here we will talk about the leftover part in the later lectures